Welcome to Formula Drift Insider, I'm Ryan Sage. This week we get inside the head of Judge Tony Angelo as he recounts his decision on one of the most talked about tandem battles of the year. And we'll also sit down with FD legend Ross Petty. It goes without saying that the most unenviable, unglamorous, and maybe difficult position in drifting is that of a judge. As the sport was born in the real world rather than the time controlled and absolute world of racing, Formula Drift is the only motorsport in the world where winners are determined by a judge's eye over a finish line. Either way, every drift battle still has one winner, and those that lose are often left wondering why, which is why a judge must be able to lay down clear and concise decisions. So now, let's go to seasoned judge Tony Angelo and find out how he did exactly that in one of the most talked about battles of 2011. All right, it's Tony Angelo here, Formula Drift judge, and I'm gonna take you guys through uh, basically what goes off inside my head when I have to, uh, to judge a tandem run in Formula D. So uh, this is a run from Seattle. I believe it's Tyler and Frederick Ospo. This is one of the one more times. They ran a couple one more times. So basically what happens is, from the judges' tower, and you have to understand that we have sort of one perspective, but in the last two years or so, with uh, the advent of drift stream and a couple of closed circuit cameras, we, we have a lot more uh, visual information to work with. So what we do first is we understand your cars may accelerate at diff different speeds to get to the first turn, but what we want you to do is stagger your launches so that you're able to, to get to the first turn together, right? Because that, that is drifting. It's, it's about being a better drifter. It's not about winning the drag race at the start. Frederick has a bit more style, and he runs right up to the wall. Frederick is, is committed, and he is not making any corrections. He runs right to big angle, and he runs right up on the wall. You can see where I stopped it here. He's actually. He's actually touching the wall. Now Tyler, as a chase car, it's his job to, to mimic the car in front of him, to apply pressure, to have as much angle and as much style, meaning no corrections and as much commitment as the car in front of him. We can watch him come in to the, to the power alley here, where basically you run, you use the whole track, but specifically we want you with the back of your car on this outside wall here coming deep into the infield. And the reason that we need you all the way out on there is because if you take a smaller, more natural racing line, it's easy to, to make distance up, but it's not, uh, it's not as hard, it doesn't show as much skill. And that's not what we ask you to do, it's not as exciting of a line. Here again, Frederick, tons of angle, lots of commitment. Tyler trying to make up the proximity by compromising other parts of the drift. Angle, style, line, stuff like that. And the thing is, it's not just about how close you are, like I'm saying, it's about the other, all the other aspects of drifting that you need to you need to keep those in check while you apply pressure with proximity. So these drivers are hugely talented. They're pushing the limits of the sport and their cars. And, and you know, this is a, a, a pretty clear run uh, to, to find uh, an advantage. But oftentimes it's much harder. And, and you know, being a judge is tough. We do our best out there. A lot of times we can't even see uh, everything that, that you can see on the drift stream. That's why luckily we were able to, uh, to have that now to, to reference. But it's, it's a tough job and uh, we do our best. Having been around since the inception of drifting here in the United States, Ross Petty has been one of the most well-known, influential figures in Formula Drift. He's also one of the most outspoken, so let's hear what the man known as Mr. Rasta has for us today. Take one. What's up, my name's Ross Petty. I'm out of Okinawa, Hawaii. I've been up in California for about six years now. I represent Garage Boso, my shop, my team, my friends. And uh, yeah, we just come out here to Formula D to, you know, throw it down and try to hang with the big boys. Yeah, in Hawaii, drifting's big, man. It's mostly like a cultural, you know, grassroots street scene. And everyone out there rushes, you know. They'll have, like, the, the jankiest cars and, uh, you know, low budget stuff, you know. But they, pound for pound, people in Hawaii kill drifting. So it's a big scene, and you know that's where I, when I came from Okinawa, I was in uh, Hawaii, and that's what made me come up here and become professional. You know, let's just put it this way: I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or whatever you want to call it, and I'm not gonna place blame on things that I don't have facts behind. But I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this from the beginning. You know, when you have a judge that is the tech inspector that is in an alliance, if you would call it, with the announcer and a lot of the other drivers, there's a conflict of interest. Just like the people of the, you know, CFR are the vice president of the United States, you know? 
There's a conflict of interest there and it shouldn't be. Uh, I had a license in Michigan revoked. I had a license in Hawaii revoked, still pending. Um, Cali, I'm, I'm pretty good. I paid him up, you know, I showed up for court and paid him up. So yeah, Cali, I've had a few encounters. It's probably about 6,000 right now in Cali. But, you know, daily driving, I drive very normal. But it's just when I get caught for unfortunate uh, events. But it's totally safe. I'm not drifting through school zones and, uh, and um, condoning that at all. That's not a good thing to do. Actually, mostly my tickets are for being profiled and pulled over and getting modified tickets and things like that, like running red lights or anything like that. Mostly stupid stuff because they profile me and I look like a weirdo, you know. And that's a wrap for this week. For a look at what's next, we give you the professional hot chick, Marcella. Thanks, Ryan. Next week, we have a little fun with an intern by throwing him into the cockpit with one of the most aggressive drivers in drifting, Frederick Osbo. Then we'll sit down with well-known privateer driver Cyrus Martinez. As always, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and email comments or suggestions to insider at formulad.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll drift back to you next week.